So this is B A. This goes three to one, B B. This is one up to two, up to three. Two, two ascents, ascent, descent. And finally, there's no relation one. So here, if we define um, this A B index, we end up getting A B. Well, let's write this over. A A plus A B plus B A plus B B plus one. And again, you say, oh c squared plus 1, right? This, this would be the natural thing. So the question is, do we always have uh, this kind of a CD index occurring in this Coxeter setting you know, for general Coxeter groups? And the answer is yes. So actually, Brenti and Valera, Valera and Brenti, showed that they showed that you have this complete CD index exists for Coxeter systems, so Coxeter groups. And the thing is, this was hard. So you should think hard, and this is a hard paper. It uses quasi symmetric functions. Yeah, I mentioned this before. Peak algebra, it's hard. So what happened is this work with Aaronborg, we said, oh, this is just an example of these directed graphs. We can actually get all these nice results that Blair and Parenti struggled over very easily now. And you, and you got more general things? Or the same? Oh, yeah, this is more general. Oh, yeah. So oh, you found yeah. the trivial internalization. We found the trivial well, internalization. Really. It's but it is. It's sort of a shock. Yeah. It was to I mean, when Richard and I were doing this, so we know. talked about experimental. We had a lot of conditions that we thought was going to give us the CD index. And um, it was sort of a shock how we kept on getting rid of more and more and finally got down to basically you know, this R tilde is equal to F tilde. So, okay, so let's state some of these. So results. you have an easier proof, but it's more general. Well, I'm going to give you proofs, yeah, yeah. which are easier and more general. Right. So it's really nice. But you know, for this, this example. Okay, so now, let's take some of these things. So here, um, so again, these results Valera and Brenti showed. But now, with all the stuff we've done, this is a corollary feature. So the first is that that the um, all right, they call it complete CD index. We just call it CD index. You know, we have different degrees. But the complete CD, CD index exists. You know, the fact that you can have this writing. And the answer is, sure, here's the proof now. Easy proof, our proof, which says that, OK, this reflection ordering is reversible. Which means that rising chains under the one ordering, under the reverse, become falling ones, which means R tilde is equal to F tilde. These are nice, directed graphs, not acyclic. Everything's great. R tilde to F tilde, which implies CD index exists. So boom, I mean, it's like two line proof. It's like, oh, great. So that's when you know you have the right thing. Um, second thing, let's see. I don't want to have to try to remember. Um, oh yeah, this one. Um, this was very confusing to them. They were saying. Why is it that if you have look at the top degree, so of course you know, in general these are much higher degrees, so again I'm using baby examples. This top degree thing, they were like, why are we getting the usual CD index? You know, why is that happening with these polynomials? They didn't understand it. And again, it's because they were really in, in this quasi-symmetric way and it was making it harder. So top degree gives classical CD index. And the proof of this is that restricting, you restrict your Bruhat poset, Bruhat graph, sorry, to Bruhat poset. And so in other words, you get rid of the shortcuts. And then your labeling that you have is now an R labeling. The reflection ordering is an R labeling. 
What do you mean by top degree? Top degree. So for example, what if you had um, uh, something? Let's say you had C, I don't know, C to the fifth plus, I don't know if this is real or not, C degree five, uh, C, D, C squared, whatever, 10, D, C, plus, let's see, I have to have something real, 2, D, C, I don't know. I'm making up something completely strange. <coughs> so, I don't know. So what it is would be, notice this is degree five, if I did this right, five, five, uh, one, two, three, 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 one. Throw out these terms. Keep the highest degree. That is traditional CD index of the poset. So that's a good question. Okay, third thing is they were wondering, I if I did this right, was it degree five? Yeah, yeah, good. Was that if you look at the parities of the degrees of, of the monomials that occur, they always were the same. Like here, this is even, degree two, degree zero. Why is that the case? So parity. So degrees of CD terms all have same parity. And now the proof is like super easy because all it is is actually from the fact that this underlying graph is bipartite. So that's where this is coming from. Um, the diagram is bipartite. So this was actually very, very easy. So how much is my remaining time on my 48 minutes? Because two minutes. Two minutes. Ah, wait. Wait, wait. So except I have to erase, <laughs> I think. Uh, yeah. OK, so what's some current things that are going on, you know, current work and stuff that's been done recently. So recent and current work. And one of the things is that all this stuff is actually related to constant-listed polynomials. So we're currently develop um, Kostan, what was called Kostan by Lustig polynomials for balanced graphs. We have a class of these balanced graphs with a certain type of balanced labeling. Actually, I never actually told you this. I forgot this part. When you have this R tilde is equal to F tilde, one of these labelings, we call that a balanced labeling. So we have a subclass of balanced labelings um, that we are pretty sure um, that we can actually define, we can define custom lustic polynomials and, um, actually no, I'm saying the wrong thing. That's something else. So, or, so we, can, we can actually develop custom lustic polynomials for balanced graphs. So something called, um, by result of Dyer's, you can actually do this. So it's, it's a little bit tricky though, we're, we're working on this. Something that's, that's open that we're working on is actually showing non-negativity of the CD index for balanced graphs. And this is the one that we actually have a very nice candidate, very huge family of balanced graphs with a certain type of labeling where we actually think this is going to be non-negative. Work of Brenti and Belair have actually shown that this non-negativity um, that has actually shown that if you know this complete CD index, you can actually define the cost and listed polynomials. So this is another way to get at these things. These occur in algebraic geometry. They have integer coefficients. Um, the thing is, they're, they're known to be non-negative, but um, not by any sort of easy proof. No known combinatorial proof. So we're actually hoping via this complete CD index in some more general setting, we can nail this down. So this is a hope. Um, what else? Are you looking at the time? How much more time? Seven seconds. Oh, that's too bad. Let's see. Level Eulerian posets with Hetchy. We've looked at these things. Um, actually, looking at infinite posets. We have a class of posets which, um, if you look at every subinterval, you get every CD monomial of whatever the length of the interval is, minus one. Every CD monomial of that degree occurs once. And this is, again, we're trying to get at this infinite case. One thing to um, 
Do all Eulerian post sets have an R, an R labeling? The answer is no. So um, this has been posted on the archive recently. And another thing, if you want to, so that's two other things. So this is with Aaron Moore and Hetchy, and this is with Aaron Moore about R labelings. To learn more, you need to read the monograph with code name ABCDEF. This stands for Polytopes, the ABCDs of Enumerating Plants. And I am writing this with Lou Blair and Richard Aaron Boyd. Thank you very much. <laughs>